Um, so we're in an area, uh, northern Australia, which accounts for a big area of savannah burning. Uh, the Kimberleys is an area in northwestern Australia uh, where we carry out a uh, savannah burning project, which we want to talk to you about in terms of mitigation. Um, uh, fire, people think of fire and they think about all the bad things. In the Kimberleys, we have really hot fires, uh, higher fuel load density in hot summer months. Um, and it can be destructive, um, but you can manage it. And uh, we've developed a methodology uh, uh, using a, a traditional uh, fire management. Uh, historically, Aboriginal people were uh, carrying out fire management and uh, until uh, settlement when that stopped because people were removed off their lands. Um, and, uh, but historically, they had a, a way of managing fire. Um, this project allows people to get back out on country and to start the process again where they're integrating uh, fire management, traditional fire practice, uh, with a method for uh, creating uh, the management of fire, going out doing fire burns on country. We use our uh, rangers, biodiversity rangers. Um, uh, there's a cycle uh, in terms of what we do as a uh, method uh, looking at mitigation, how do we set up a process so that we can get the benefits of uh, carbon abatement uh, credits and um, our groups are uh, using fire differently. There's all different types of fires. Uh, not all fires bad. Uh, you know, if you, uh, what we do is we look at cool fire burns in cooler months rather than the hot summer burns. We can control the fire and we can contain it and we can con contain or regulate the, the emissions uh, differently to a hot fire burn. What's different about this is that our traditional owner groups are, are use our native title rights uh, recognition to run this project. It's different uh, for us in Australia. Uh, and. And the difference is that we get all of the benefits uh, that are created out of the carbon abatement plus the benefits of the management and ownership of the process. Here you can see our groups uh, do a lot of planning around it. They look at the information, the historic information, the previous year's fire burns. They look at uh, all the science information, the cultural uh, data that they need to plan about how to undertake the fire burning. Um, uh, a lot of the Kimberleys, it's uh, remote areas, 420,000 square kilometers. Uh, we have some rough roads, uh, some of, a lot of it's inaccessible. Uh, you can only go so far with uh, the roads. And uh, people will get out on country and reconnect with country is the other benefit that we can get. The other way we do it is by air, by helicopter. So you have to go out because you can't access it any further by road or by sea. Uh, so you get up on a helicopter and they use these device that an incendiary device that drops a pallet and to start uh, strategic fires all along um, and uh, From that you can see uh, This is what they call uh, mosaic burning. It's a control burn you create the fire breaks uh, in a strategic way so that when you get the late season fire burns, they're not going to burn as high or, or as out of control as they normally would if you had a higher fuel uh, density load. Um, here you can see the uh, rangers, uh, the community people here, using the modern technology of satellite tracking to monitor the fires that they set. Um, they can pretty much uh, manage those fires and, and know exactly what's happening. They've got to look at and they've got to understand the, the wind conditions, a whole range of other conditions that affect the way the fire operates. Here you can see the uh, difference between uh, fires that are in the blue areas that have been burned strategically and a few pockets of red here and there. It would have look, looked a lot different uh, had it been uh, not managed properly and not controlled in the way that they've done strategically with this uh, uh, fire process. Uh, the result of this is that you can reduce the emissions between cool fire burns and high fire burns uh, in terms of the emissions that are going, the CO2 and the uh, heat emissions into, into the atmosphere. And of course the benefit is that uh, you, you, we're doing our bit for mitigation uh, and we're controlling the, the effect of fire. The result of that is that we can protect our uh, um, flora and fauna, uh, our livelihoods, our sustainability, protection of those uh, species or, or other 
uh, types of vegetation that would otherwise be destroyed and sometimes gone forever if the fires are so hot in terms of the damage that they can uh, produce. The other benefits are that our ranger groups develop uh, conservation biodiversity type ranges. Uh, you create employment and jobs for people out there. It's reconnecting people to their countries and their lands. The cultural connection is really important. Uh, so this has other benefits around strengthening their ties to land. Uh, by the, uh, sorry, the, the, um, uh, here the, the Goulian finch threatened species whose habitats can be quite easily destroyed by high fires and perhaps gone forever. So some of those pockets of areas in the Kimberleys, uh, you know, if, if the fire continues the way it does, uh, threats to uh, species like this that are threatened species like the Goulian finch, uh, finch will disappear. We have rock art sites around the area uh, which also uh, can be damaged by high fires. Um, so this is uh, also critical and, and important in terms of people's cultural uh, places and, and, and areas of significance. So uh, these are the benefits of, of looking after uh, different things. Um, we do a comparison of the savanna burning and we look at the way in which other parts of the world and the globe uh, have other savannas that also uh, have burns. Uh, we are very interested in the transferability of this methodology and this uh, savanna burning project that we're doing uh, because we think it has application in other parts of the world. So all of the benefits that we can get from managing our country and, and using our cultural values and knowledge and, and the, the link between Western science and cultural knowledge leads to uh, the ongoing uh, sustainability and in our future uh, interests for our people and the next generation. So, thank you.